everyone and welcome to the mechanical vibrations tutorial today we are going to work on a very interesting problem in mechanical vibrations which is basically the vibrations application and mainly on the design of vibration absorbers so let's begin so what is a vibration absorber so basically a vibration absorber is a component which is added to our main vibrating system to reduce the vibration of our main system or to control the vibration or basically mitigate the vibration due to external you know forces in fact in the control and reduction of vibrations you may use damping components or uh, like like other materials like rubbers and resilient materials but one method to control uh, and reduce vibration is the design of uh, mass spring based vibration absorbers so let me uh, do a drawing and see what we have for the design of vibration absorbers so imagine we have a main system uh, like our main system that we want to reduce the vibration uh, with a spring and a mass and there there might be some you know uh, damping in the system because of the structural you know uh, damping but uh, there is no additional damping like viscose damping in the system so let's say k1 is the stiffness of the system our main system and m1 is the mass of the system and a force like a harmonic force with the expression of f naught say for example sine omega t is applied to the system and uh, this omega uh, we don't know what it is and it's a frequency of excitation right now we we want to design a vibration absorber to reduce the vibration of the main system so let's see what we have for our uh, original system so for our original system we know that there is a natural frequency omega 1 which is equal to k1 over m1 right we remember that from single degree of freedom system and uh, we also remember that we, we will have a resonance condition, right, which occurs when omega is close to omega 1 or equal to omega 1 in the ideal case. So what happens is if we have the frequency amplitude response, and this is actually the amplitude of our vibration, we call it, so if, if this is actually x1, uh, if we have x1 over normally they show it x1 over delta static right you remember delta static or i can explain more and we have omega over omega one our frequency response is in a way that we have a resonance at one and we get something like this right you remember that at the frequency of equal to our natural frequency of the I mean the force frequency equal to the natural frequency we get a huge amplitude in theory it's infinite like a infinity but in practice the system may be damaged at this frequency or at the resonance condition breaks down or there might be some uh, sort of a damping in the structure that stops the system when we pass through this resonance condition right so uh, just to remember delta static is equal to f naught over uh, our you know uh, k1 right this is something we know from before this is the static uh, deflection of the system so now we want to add a component to the system to basically uh, avoid this resonance behavior or in case that our system uh, has a force with omega equal to omega one we avoid any resonance behavior so let's say if the force that is applied to the system has a frequency near to our natural frequency or close to the, the natural frequency of the system. And now we want to add a component to our system to get away from resonance condition or nearly resonance condition. Say for example, the force, we know that the frequency is in a way that is giving us a very high amplitude, something like this. So we want to get away from that by adding a simple component into the system. So the vibration absorber is essentially just a mass spring system attached to our main system. So let's say we have an additional spring like K2 and a small mass of M1. So by adding 
uh, sorry, it's M2. By adding a mass spring system, we want to reduce the vibration or absorb the vibration. So we have K2, uh, M2. And uh, for this part only, uh, we can say omega 2. The natural frequency for the second uh, mass spring is just, let's suppose for this case, it's equal to K2 over M2. Just keep that in mind. This is the expression that we define here. Right, the natural frequency for for the second component. Okay, now let's uh, review what we had from a two degree of freedom system and how we can interpret the addition of you know uh, vibration absorber. So, if you remember from the two degree of freedom systems, when we have one spring and one mass K1, M1, and another mass spring system, I'm sure that you remember that from our previous tutorials or you can simply uh, you know go over our previous tutorials and uh, we have the force of F naught and it's a harmonic force sine omega t in the previous tutorial we showed you how to deal with such systems like the force vibration of uh, basically two degree of freedom systems we have x1 and x2 here because we added and we have two degrees of freedom so as you may remember we can simply find the equation of motion using newton's law i don't want to go through the details but i'm sure that you can find it easily because this is the case that we studied a lot in the previous tutorial so we have m1 x double dot one plus uh, uh, k1 plus k2 x1 right minus k2 x2 equal to f naught sine omega t so this is one equation of motion and the other equation of motion is m2 x double dot 2 minus k2 x1 plus k2 x2 equal to zero because there is no force applied to the added system or to our vibration absorber so this is actually our vibration absorber and we added it into our system right okay so this is the equation of motion and uh, like i said we we dealt we dealt with this system using the you know impedance method we discussed before how to deal with a system like a two degree freedom system with a force we we try to have the exponential components or in this case we can use only the sine component and uh, find the impedance matrix and then find the inverse of that to find the ampli like the amplitudes of the vibration so in that in this case because we have a harmonic and a sine function we could simply say that our like amplitudes xj or the expression for the displacements are xj the amplitude sine omega t right this is our basically steady state solution so steady state response right because we don't want to deal with you know initial conditions and our transient response so um, we could simply based on the imp impedance you know method we could find x1 and x2 so j is one and two and if we use the procedure that I explained in the previous tutorial, we can find the amplitude. So simply, uh, I just write them down here, but you can simply review the previous tutorial. So X1, the amplitude of the vibration for the first mass, which is our main system, is equal to K2 minus M2 omega squared F0 divided by k1 plus k2 minus m1 omega squared times k2 minus m2 omega squared minus k2 squared you may remember the denominator is the determinant of our you know impedance matrix and x2 is equal to k2 F naught times same denominator 
k1 plus k2 minus m1 omega squared times k2 minus m2 omega squared minus k2 squared so these are the expressions for the amplitudes and as you see because there is only one force applied to the uh, system we only have f naught component or f applied to the first mass in the amplitudes of the two systems so x1 is the amplitude of our main system right the system that we want to reduce the vibration or we want to absorb its vibration x2 is the amplitude of the vibration absorber right so let's uh, look closely into these equations and see how we can basically uh, reduce x1 so as you may remember we want to avoid the resonance condition and we also want to make x1 as small as possible because it's our main system say for example it's a transmission line or it's a sort of engine with a rotating on balance rested on a spring or it's a motor anything that is under vibration and we want to reduce its vibration so if we look closely to this equation the equation for x1 how can we reduce x1 how can we make the amplitude of vibration small so in fact the minimum amplitude of vibration is zero and it occurs when we set the numerator or this part of this expression expression equal to zero so let's set this equal to zero and see what we have so f naught is not zero because it's a constant in the amplitude of vibration so the only component that makes the amplitude of our main system zero is this bracket right so let's see what we have so we get basically k2 minus m2 omega square equal to zero this is the condition that makes x1 the amplitude of our main system zero and as you see this like uh, equation has the components for our vibra vibration uh, absorber so if we simplify it we find that uh, we, we should have omega equal to k2 divided by m2 just take k2 to the right hand side simplify for negative signs divide by m2 and then take the square root so this is the condition for having the vibration of our main system zero at the resonance condition right so as you see it seems that to satisfy this condition the frequency of excitation should be equal to the natural frequency of our vibration absorber right so uh, it, it is equal to basically uh, well if we also remember at resonance what we have at resonance for our original system we had omega equal to omega 1 equal to k1 and 1 and uh, let's say squared which also for this case with the absorber we have it k2 m2 right very easy so in that case uh, let's simplify the expressions we had for x1 and x2 and uh, like for any omega not necessarily for resonance so what we found what i want to do here is to simplify the expressions for x1 and x2 for any omega not necessarily for the resonance but uh, to simplify it i want to use this expression i want to use omega 1 equal to k1 over m1 and uh, omega 2 equal to k2 over m2 and we also have delta statics which is equal to f naught over k1 right and k1 is the stiffness of our main system so let's plug in these you know expressions into the expressions for x1 so all would go to x1 and x2 and further like simplified i don't want to go through the simplification but i'm 100 percent sure that uh, you could basically find it for your own case so uh x1 we have x1 over delta static equal to this is the representation that we had is equal to 1 minus omega over omega 2 squared right we just simplified the function with respect to f k 
m same as before divided by 1 plus k1 over k2 minus omega over omega 1 squared times 1 minus omega over one, omega 2 squared minus k2 over k just simplify i just simplify that and x2 over delta static is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus k1 over k2 minus omega over omega 1 squared times 1 minus omega over omega 2 squared and minus k2 divided by k1 right so we just replace the like those expressions into x1 and x2 divided by the other statics and simplify okay so at resonance again at resonance condition so let's say at resonance which omega is equal to omega 1 right we have basically what if I go back to this equation so say omega equal to omega 1 so what happens is uh, we have many of these terms equal to 0 because we also have omega equal to omega 2 right based on what we found so we also have uh, you remember we designed the absorber to get omega equal to omega 2 so x1 would be 0 right again I go back so the numerator in this equation, in the top equation basically is zero. But in the bottom equation, let's set these components equal to zero. And there is a bracket here that I, so this part is zero, the whole thing is zero. We only have this part, right? And uh, which means that for at resonance, X2 is equal to minus K2 divided by k, uh, k1 divided by k2 times delta statics and if we simplify uh, we use the expression for delta static we get minus f naught over k2 right so our amplitude is basically x2 is equal to minus f naught over k2 so this means that the force that is applied through like the external excitation to the first or the main system there is another force resisting that one coming from the vibration absorber so in fact it it is against the excitation which cancel out the force applied to the main system right so let's see how we can use this equation and how we can design our vibration absorber so we found that x2 is equal to minus f naught divided by k2 right so it means that basically k2 uh, k2 x2 is equal to minus f naught also instead of you know we can we can use uh, omega squared m2 equal to k2 right we know that from the frequency relationships of omega squared m2 x2 is equal to minus f so why i am basically writing these two equations this is the equation that we can use for the design problems so in many design problems x2 is given to you for example based on the design and size limitations the maximum amplitude or the amplitude of uh, the amplitude that the vibration absorber can move under resonance is given like based on your device vibrating system so you know x2 then you need to, you need to only pick uh, say for example and you know f naught so you can simply calculate k2 and you know omega from your excitation and you can calculate m2 so basically you can design your vibration absorber right it's uh, it's pretty straightforward and uh, one last thing that I want you to note let's go back to our uh, x1 expression so we notice that at the resonance condition, we have x10. So uh, let me basically, why don't I just uh, erase this part 
and right underneath this equation I hope you have this equation in your records so let's go back in here and see what we have in this equation so if we look at this equation we and we try to plot like the frequency amplitude relationship so let's say the x uh, basically axis is omega over omega 1 the frequency of excitation that could be any value divided by the natural frequency of the system and the y is x1 over delta static so we already showed that by adding the vibration absorber so when it is one uh, without the natural without the you know the vibration absorber we had the resonance condition but with the vibration absorber we made it zero right so it is zero but what happens is the system has also two maximum amplitudes at other frequencies somewhere here i would call it omega one and omega two and how we find it it's very easy just set the numer the denominator equal to zero if we set the denominator equal to zero we would find two roots because it's like a quadratic equation two roots for omega which gives us two other frequencies one before our primary resonance and one after primary resonance so in reality we need to avoid these two frequencies we need to ensure that our system is vibrating at, like uh, beyond these two values for example if there is a force existing on the system which may cause a resonance and we want to start that force we have to pass this frequency very quickly because it's below our resonance and if we want to reach to the resonance we have to increase the frequency from zero to one or this omega over omega one right so make sure that in the design of your system you never have the vibration of your or the force excitation near to these points and how we can find the expressions for these two frequencies again we can find the roots of the denominator so this is just one note that i want to mention that having the vibration absorber is not necessarily useful if our excitation frequency is uh, be beyond our original resonance case like uh, far smaller or far larger than that value right just make sure about uh, how the excitation frequency is applied but when we have the resonance the original resonance condition our vibration absorber can simply um, set our main system vibration equal to zero right which is very interesting in practice uh, the frequency of excitation is not necessarily uh, equal to the resonance condition it's, it might be near resonance so the vibration absorber is added to reduce basically the vibration like instead of having it say for example the excitation frequency is at this point and in the non not the system without any absorber our vibration would be here but with the absorber the vibration amplitude is only this amount which is very small so this is how uh, in practice we can basically uh, use the vibration absorber so to consolidate all these design and applications let's have a quick uh, example on the design of vibration absorbers so here is the example that we have for today which is the vibration of the system under rotating and balance and i hope you can remember that from what we basically uh, had in the system like single degree of freedom systems so let's just uh, go over the example so we have basically in this example we have an electric motor with a rotating on balance so the mass of the rotor is given so our main system is this rotor uh, is this motor which is rotating with uh, like a frequency and there is a fixed fixed uh, beam which is acting as a spring right and then there is a rotating on balance in the system so we have our main system like I would call it M1 and there is the rotating balance E uh, M uh, we call it you remember from previous case uh, like this is something that we studied before you can definitely review and uh, remember how to find that ME is given and then the system is rested on a beam which acts as a 
sort of a spring so I, I i want to basically model it as a spring here so this is oh, let me do another drawing here for better clarity so we have this m1 there is a rotating unbalance em which causes you know you remember that the rotating unbalance causes a vibration like uh, a force where f naught is equal to m e omega square right this is something we had from a uh, single degree of freedom system we can simply find that in our previous tutorial so the beam the system rested on acts as a spring like when we look at the vibration in the lateral motion and i will tell you how to find k so we call it k1 the stiffness of so the beam stiffness and uh, so now a vibration absorber is added to the system so we have k2 and then we have m2 so the problem says we know the mass of like m2 m1 the natural frequency this omega we know that it's here uh, we, we need to find k values for our system and uh, we also know me which is 0.1 kilogram meter so we want to have the system vibration to be suppressed by attaching a vibration absorber here right and uh, we need to find the value of k2 and m2 so that the amplitude of the vibration of the like the absorber is less than two centimeters so in this case x2 is given like what what i explained before in the design problems which is two centimeters and then we want to design k2 and m2 so let's say let's see how we can solve this problem so we need to basically go back to our you know uh, content we had for uh, if you may remember from uh, solid mechanics or the examples that we have when we have a beam and here the cross section is like a rectangle and uh, th there is an arbitrary force point force at a distance of a uh, from one side and b from the other side so i call this force p we can find the deflection based on the knowledge of solid mechanics you can find that in the solid mechanics books and you can even uh, there are like tables showing that what the deflection of a beam under a force is so i call it y or, or we can call it uh, let me call it delta y right here so this is delta y so if again you go back to your solid mechanic course delta y for any ar arbitrary point force of p uh, through the structure of the beam the delta would be p b squared a squared um, times 3 a l minus a times 3 a plus b this is again something you could find in the textbooks of solid mechanics 6 e i b l cubed so this is the formula and uh, i is basically the moment of inertia so if that's uh, basically w and this length is d the i is equal to 1 12th of w d cube and e is the moment of inertia of material uh, e is the young modulus of the material which is a steel for this example and uh, so we, we we know that and l is the total length of the system this is l so we know delta y for any p like this is the expression we don't have any p for now and i'm telling you why we don't use any value for p here because we want to find k right and what is k the lateral vibration under the stiffness of the spring we we can say that f or here p is equal to k which is k1 here times delta y so what is k k1 is p over delta y so if we simply divide p by delta y here so this is the expression for delta y we just uh, divide p by this whole expression the p you know the p on top and bottom cancels out each other so basically imagine 
Uh, why don't I use a different color? So imagine we want to divide P by delta Y to find K. So we have a P in the numerator. So this, these two P's cancel out each other so that there is no expression for P involved. And we can simply find K in here. So this is equal to K1, right? This is how we can find the stiffness of our beam. So if we do so and do some simplifications, knowing that uh, we know the value of i and we know the value of e, so k1 is equal to p over del uh, delta y, and we have all the values for a, b, for e, for i. I don't want to do the calculation. You can simply plug in into our previous, uh, you know, uh, uh, formula, knowing that e is. 207 or 207 gigapascal for steel you can simplify it and the k1 uh, would be uh, just write down the final value is 362167 newton per meter you can double check so take e as uh, 207 uh, gigapascal and for i we know the value of the w w is 15 centimeters based on the cross section given and B is uh, equal to uh, uh, like 0 0.012 meter right so just we have this in the form of like problem definition so we know the value of K the value of Omega is also given which is uh, 1350 rpm which is equal to 141.5 372 radian per second so uh, again m1 is given to 20 kilogram and me or em our eccentricity is 0.1 kilogram meter so see it's a function of mass and uh, the distance that's why it's kilogram meter okay so based on the definition we had for vibration absorber we want to set the natural frequency uh, of the vibration absorber equal to the natural frequency or oh, equal to the uh, force excitation so but before that let's find the natural frequency okay so uh, so far we found the components for the system the condition for having the vibration absorber or the for the design of the vibration absorber was to set the excitation frequency equal to the natural frequency of the absorber so we, ha we have to set omega equal to omega square uh, omega 2 so from here we can simply know that omega 2 is equal to a square root of k2 over uh, m2 and k2 and m2 are the unknowns right and we want to design so k2 is equal to uh, m2 omega uh, square with these considerations let's let's say how we can find k2 and m2 so one, one way is to select the value for M2 or K2 and then calculate for the other one. Say for example, if we select M2 equal to 10 kilograms, right? Which is just a, a number I selected, knowing that it's smaller than our main system mass, then we can find K2 as 19.98 uh, to the power of 10 to the power of four newton per meter so we can also find another uh, like select another mass and, and another k based on like, logical values so the condition for our system was x2 to be less than 0.2 and if you remember from uh, like our demonstrations we found that uh, we have k2 x2 equal to minus f naught or we have m2 omega squared x2 equal to minus f naught and for the rotating on balance we know that f naught is equal to the eccentricity m e and natural uh, frequency of excitation uh, squared right this is something we had from from before so with with these considerations and knowing that we have the condition for x2 x2 is basically uh, minus f naught over k2 uh, which is equal to minus m e omega square m e m e is the eccentricity don't get confused with the mass of the motor or the mass of the absorber 
while k2 is equal to m2 omega 2 squared or omega squared right so we can simply find it as minus me over m2 so uh, we we have the value for minus for me which is minus uh, zero, zero, 001 divided by 10 right this is something that uh, or actually it's uh, the eccentricity is 0.1 which gives us x2 as minus 0.01 so for sure it's less than uh, 2 centimeters which satisfies the condition so this is meter and this is the meter right so we selected m as 10 kilograms we calculated k2 and we ensure that x2 is below 2 centimeters based on the problem uh, definitions alternatively is we, we have x2 and we set it equal to the worst case and then from x2 we can uh, based on these expressions here we can find both k2 and m2 and design that but this is also another method that we can find k2 and m2 having the worst case scenario which is like the x2 the amplitude of ab the absorber equal to two centimeters so uh, we can use this method uh, with to have another design uh, component so i hope uh, you learned the idea of designing vibration absorbers because it's very useful for practical applications it's the mixture of you know single degree of freedom systems and uh, two degree of freedom systems that we covered in this uh, in the previous tutorials so i hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for uh, future videos Thank you.